Greetings and welcome to Tech 3D. All right, well, well this was. Uh, this is my, it's not personal rig update because it's what I use on the channel, but it is the system that I use day in and day out. And it is typically what I would recommend to most people should they ask, hey, I've got pretty much no budget. What do you recommend that I get? It would be something along these lines, but it's what I'll be using day in and day out on the channel. Uh, I'm mostly a video editor these days, but still, this is the perfect 3D card workstation. And it's going to be replacing my 10th gen system that I built in this video up here. And because in one of my previous videos, I, <laughs> I don't know who got the reference, but I made reference to a 22 year old film that just happened to be one of my favorite films. This happened. Sorry, fine, just just do it. Intel 12th gen, everything in white. Absolutely no RGB. These are the three fundamental components of the new generation 2022 3D CAD workstation. Speed is a byproduct. Working fast. But remember, workstation is you. You are the workstation. Okay? Let's ride! Let's ride. Let's ride. Doesn't, doesn't really work here. Let, let's work. Let, let's work. No, doesn't. No. What are you doing here? Hey, mate, if you, if you didn't get that reference, fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> it. It seemed like a good idea in, in my head. Never mind. Right. So this build, uh, clearly the theme was no RGB. That's where I wanted to head with this build. And I think I've succeeded in doing so. My old 10th gen build was leathered in RGB all over the place, but it was only ever set to white. And I still quite like that. I still like the fact that you've got this internal LED show, showcasing your parts like a show build. But the amount of third party software needed to keep that going, Cam, you know, NZXT Cam and IQ and all the other ones, I'm done with it. I'm completely done with all that software. So this new build, the only bit of software that you could optionally choose to have is thermal takes to put the image on the screen of the AIO. Without that, it just displays the liquid temperature by default. And if you don't put that on, you are completely freed from any and all third party RGB software. And there's something liberating about that. And I, I'm really enjoying it. It's it's freeing. But anyway, I want to give a massive shout out to Thermal Take for su supporting this build. They've provided the majority of the parts. And let's start with the case. The case is the Thermal Take Core P6. This thing is a chonker. It's a lord. He come in massive behemoth of a case. And clearly, I don't, <laughs> don't need to be told I'm underutilizing this in a way it's it's not meant to be intended. It's supposed to be used for open loop builds, given the amount of space inside that I am in the barren emptiness that's currently there. But I chose to use this because it just looks utterly stunning. I love the aesthetic. Thermally, it's not the best. It's covered in glass, but I'm... I'm not all that concerned about that, given the, 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 the style and the type of parts that I'm using in here. But this can be vase mounted onto the wall. If you buy the, the unfortunately optional accessory, it's fully modular as well. So it can be disassembled and reassembled in all different kinds of orientations. But ultimately, this thing is absolutely stunning, but it's heavy. It is really heavy, but it's uh, it's expensive as well. But I absolutely love the look of it. Good array of ports on the front as well. And yeah, this is good enough for me. Absolutely. The fans. I'm using Thermaltake Tough Fan 12 2000 RPM fans. And these things are gorgeous. Really different. I loved the, the best way I can describe them is a military look. They've got this gray and black textured look to them. And the, the 2000 RPM fans, they can be put on radiators or, or used as case fans. The CPU is the Intel i9 12900K. Uh, the AIO itself is the Thermaltake Ultra, it's the Tough Liquid Ultra 360. The board, the motherboard, right, this is where things started deviating and got a bit disappointing. All through my Alder Lake testing, when I was supplied uh, the, the, the Intel samples for day one testing, I'll link that video up there, I used the Asus ProArt Creator Z690 Wi-Fi board. That would have looked absolutely beautiful in this build with the gold accents against the RTX GPU. Unfortunately, I had technical difficulties with that board, which resulted in it going back to Asus. And just due to the unfortunate stock issues at the moment, I wasn't able to get a replacement. So I had to go out and buy an MSI Z690 Force Wi-Fi board. And the only reason I've chosen this board is because it was the only board I could find that was white. 
and that was DDR5. That's the only reason I've chosen this one. The RAM is Kingston Fury uh, DDR5, 5200 megahertz, and storage, mate, the storage is utterly insane. Seagate provided that. Their Fire Cuda 530 M.2 NVMe Gen 4 SSD, M.2 drive. This thing is utterly mental. Th this is best in class in absolutely, well, as far as I can tell, every category. Reliability, longevity, and performance. Uh, I've been watching videos do from, uh, there's an in independent retailer in the UK called Scan. They've been doing a lot of like torture testing and it's absolutely insane how fast this is. This is the two terabyte version. Uh, the Fire Cuda 530 M.2 drive, so that's what I've got in there. Uh, for the PSU, I've got the Thermaltake Tough Power 1000 Watt PSU, again provided by Thermaltake. And for the GPU, not provided by NVIDIA, is the RTX A5000 GPU. But if you're putting this workstation together or something similar, the 3D card, you don't need to go for the A5000, you can drop down to an A4000 uh, or an A3000, something like that. So those are the parts uh, that I've been using. Uh, coming all together, this makes for a beautiful build with no RGB. Uh, I mean, you could argue well, why why have tempered glass side panel on, in a case like that if it's not going to be lit up. That's up to you. If you want to put glowing fans in there, it's up to you. Uh, the, the only parts that will be difficult to get will be the, the, the RAM, I suspect. The GPU, because it's a professional GPU, that shouldn't be too difficult to get at this point. But the RAM, you can swap that out with DDR4, as I've shown in this video up here. Swapping out DDR4 or 5 for 4 won't make any difference to performance at this point. And by the time it does, we'll be on a dramatically different generation of CPU and platform by the time we do anyway. Now, as you can tell from the change of attire, this is a different day. I'm doing this during the edit in May. I wasn't going to do any benchmarks for this video because this is just me going, hey, it's me workstation, man. Uh, and uh, does it matter how it performs? But, well, I suppose there's a view you're going to think about buying it, but they're mostly the same parts that I've tested already on the day one video that I did. Uh, but now they're in a case and they're on a different board. I thought, ah, well, let's just test them. So I've run Cinebench and I've run Invmark. Cinebench, multi-core and single core scores. I don't know if I could have tried to get them any closer. On day one, the i9-12900K stock multi-core score was 27.226. Today, in the case on the MSI board, it was 27,179. That's bizarrely close. The single core score on day one was 1948. Today, it's 1922. So given how close those two scores were, it sort of stands to reason the likes of Infomark would be very similar, except it wasn't. And this really took me by surprise. The day one Infomark score was 66,675. So that was on a test bench using the Asus ProArt Creator Z690 Wi-Fi board. Today, I can't get it higher than 64,266. Now that's only 3% lower, but given that Cine Cinebench was so close, I don't understand where that 3% is coming from. It could, be, it could be down to a lot of things. It could be the fact that that workstation has been my production workstation for about a week now. It's got all the things that most people would have on it, right? It's got the Creative Cloud Suite, it's got OneDrive, Dropbox, it's got, you know, antivirus on, Bitdefender, which is disabled during the test, obviously, but it's never really disabled. Exclusions added. I don't know, it, it could be down to that, so I wouldn't look too much into that. But one thing I did notice is the MSI board is a lot more liberal with its power delivery. If you look in the Intel X2, Asus, Asus capped the power delivery by default out of the box at around 242 watts. So it just stopped by default at 242 watts. It would not deliver more than that. Asus, uh, MSI, it's uncapped. They will just they will just juice it to the hilt. It'll just give it as much as it needs. It's an unlimited, uncapped power delivery. It could be that, I don't know. I'm more inclined to think this is down to the fact that I've got other stuff running on it. But it's a consistent 64,000 plus. I've done multiple runs. You tend, if there's multiple stuff running in the background, if you do a five run pass, you tend to skip past those multiple background processes and you, you get a good, you get a good test run. But I've never been able to get it past that, so I don't know. Either way, if it was me personally, I'd still shoot for the, the Asus Pro Art board over the MSI board as a personal preference. But yeah, bit of an odd one there. So that's the build. I uh, hope you enjoyed. Uh, I just want to give a quick word to what I'm doing and moving forward a couple of bits and pieces. There's not been much hardware content on my channel uh, and the reason I'm putting this build together using the 12900K is because day one when Intel provided the, the samples, 
I did the day one review. If you haven't watched that already, I'll link that up here. That's performance testing on AutoCAD and Inventor and Revit showing the 12th gen just being absolutely dominant across the board which is why it's the recommendation for anyone using 3D card in any professional applications. Then I did the DDR4 versus DDR5 testing using the same professional applications. Showed no difference whatsoever. I'll link that up there. And then I'm like, well, what next? What 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 do I do now? There's a lull in, in sort of hardware content just across the board, really. And there's a bit of a lull in enthusiasm as well across the board for hardware content. Me personally, being sort of at the bottom of the stack, I'm not getting much in terms of hardware being circulated and I can't really create much content. I can't do workstation builds like I used to. Some of my most successful videos were the workstation slayers where I could put workstations together on a hugely tight budget. I can't do those anymore. And I don't really want to. I don't want to put out hardware builds in the current climate when people can't buy hardware. So I thought I'm going to put this 12900K, which has been sat on a test bench in this rig and put something together that you could possibly buy if you swap out the DDR5 for the DDR4 and go for a professional GPU. So um, yeah, moving forward, I'm going to kind of take a bit of a break from focusing on, you know, workstation hardware and Invmark's obviously going to carry on, but I'm going to focus a bit back more on my area of expertise, which is the software stuff, not tutorials, but just more on the software side of things. Whilst the, I just need the hardware market to just get its act together because things are just really depressing. And who wants to watch stuff that they can't afford? And not necessarily can't afford, just can't buy even if they could afford it. It's just, it, it's boring at the moment. So yeah, that's how this came about. And um, yeah, I'm not even asking for parts at the moment. I'm not even, I'm not even approaching companies and asking for parts because I don't want to make videos on this stuff when people can't buy the things that you, you're putting in front of them. So. My channel's going to just maybe go back to its roots a little bit more. Who knows? But anyway, thank you for watching. Like I say, all parts will be linked in the description down below. Uh, apologies again for that daft skit at the start if you didn't get that reference. Never mind. I just don't know. I'm having a bit of fun, mate. I do this full time now. I need to keep myself entertained. But thanks for watching. Links in the description again if you want to buy anything to support the channel. My name's Neil Cross. This has been Tech3D. I'll see you in the next one. Doodles.